in my life. Hello, gorgeous humans of the You Go First Masterclass. This is day one. My name is Alina Grayson. I am a business life and coach, life and business coach. Wow, I can't even talk. I'm so excited. When you're off and on, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. And I want to make sure that I share this to my Facebook group because that's where day two is going to be happening, guys. So today we're going to do it on here so that the video is shareable because these are one of the conversations I want the world to hear. So when you're hopping on, say hello. I'm really excited. I'm already buzzing, buzzing. Hello, Melissa. Hello, Julie. Hello, Tanya. Hello, Lindsay. Thank you so much for tagging, guys. Hello, Chris. Hello, Mima. How are you guys? Ah, oh, so many amazing people. I'm so, so excited. <sighs> How are you guys? So, like I said, this is day one, and I yeah, I'm gonna do this on my personal page, so it's shareable. And then day two is gonna be in the high performance coaching community, and there's gonna be a bonus thing. There's gonna be a bonus thing because I have so much to say on this topic. This masterclass is for anyone. This is a masterclass about personal power. This is a masterclass about manifesting, uh, how to become an energetic match to quantum leaps, emotional intelligence. It's going to be amazing. And like all the things are going to come through. Hello, Annie. Hello, Afro. Hello, beautiful. Hello, Danielle. If I'm not seeing your names, I love you. I will definitely catch you guys on the replay. Hello, Angela. How are you guys? So this is day one. Okay. And if this is your first time ever catching me live, let me know. I want to introduce you to my world. I'm so excited. I love hosting masterclasses. This is a really great way for us to get to know each other and get connected. And all of you guys get to network in the comments here, which is really amazing. Hello, Amy. I'm so excited. I'm so excited too. Um, and so something exciting that I do in all my masterclasses is I do do a tuition draw. I will be doing an extra one for people who shared before, so don't worry, I got you. Um, but we're going to be doing a draw on Monday for anybody who shares this video, this uh, one that you're watching right now, or you take a snapshot of this um, day one, or you can just share the graphic and tag me anywhere on your social media, you will get a chance to win 50% off any of my program and automatically you will get a free spot in my money codes program and we have five modules in there this is a program that i'm growing out all about money investing it growing it manifesting it and every single time i launch a module it goes up in price so you get it absolutely free three people get a chance to win that and 50 percent off any bundles and programs so that's really exciting so all you have to do is share this video um take a picture hi or um yeah just share the graphic on the thing hello um, so thank you for thank you guys for sharing so much. <sighs> so I'm gonna like breathe and get in the zone here because I have a lot to say about this stuff, guys. I want to talk to you guys about a lot of magical, life-changing things, the things that honestly my soul gets lit up by. And my whole intention is that when you walk away from this masterclass, from the tip of your head to the tip of your toes, and your whole soul is oozing that you know on a cellular level that the fact that you desire anything, whatever it is that you desire, whatever your dream is, you are a match for it. You have the power to have it, to manifest it, to create it. Otherwise, we would never have the dreams that we have or just any of the desires. If you have a desire, if you dream it, you are already an energetic match to it. Hello, Roxanne. Hello, beautiful. Thank you, everybody who's tagging and sharing. I love you guys. You're so amazing. So, we do not just desire things and dream things for no reason. There's a reason you have a desire. Desires are actually alive, but that's a next level conversation for another day. But if you dream something, you are already 100% a match for it or you wouldn't want it, okay? Desires are actually alive. Dreams are alive and they choose us because we are an energetic match to it. And you're gonna really understand today how to manifest what you want. And I say what you want because you are always manifesting, always. All the time you're manifesting right now but you might just not understand how the heck do i manifest the actual things that i want and there's this inner game stuff that happens okay and we're going to entangle that then we're going to talk about quantum leaps and collapsing time and emotional intelligence like so much gold things that have really changed my life so i'm really excited thank you sophia hello scarlett anybody that i don't see hello 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 i love you guys so much and let me know if i'm live in the high performance coaching community too Okay, so anybody is going to benefit from this, anybody at all. Teenagers, men, women, grandma, send your friends, okay? So I'm gonna have a really powerful conversation over the next two days, and I'm gonna have a little bonus thing for you guys as well. And my intention is that you know, you know in your heart on a cellular level that you are meant to have the things that 
you dream of. Otherwise, you wouldn't have them, okay? And I say this with, like, conviction oozing out of my soul, okay? I believe in my teachings. I believe in my body of work. I believe in courage. I believe that when you really go first and go after it, things can start changing in your life, okay? So I'm going to just get started because we have a lot to talk about. Uh, thank you, Tanya. Thank you so much for tagging Melissa. You guys are amazing. I love you so much. And I love your masterclass. I'm so excited. And if you're new to my world, and even if you've already watched the Prove It masterclass that I did at the beginning of the year, it will be, it will be like a, such a beautiful combination to this. It will just take you to another level. So if you want to go and re-listen to that or go watch that after this, a really good idea, okay? So tell me in the comments. This is how we're going to get started. Tell me in the comments for those of you watching live and hashtag replay. If you have ever thought about someone, they're just lucky. They're just a lucky biatch. Tell me in the comments, okay? Like, have you ever thought about someone or said this about someone? Oh, they're just lucky. They have this thing because they're lucky. They were just born lucky. It's their genetics. Maybe she was born with it, right? And this could be about a friend, a family member. It could even be about someone that you see on TV or someone in your industry, have you ever thought, oh, they have this thing because they are lucky? Yes, 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 okay, good. Be honest, okay? Jealousy is really potent and it's really useful, okay? I know I have, actually, most of my life. Anytime that I watch people on TV um, or people that I really admired, I, I thought that they were just lucky. I'm like, people are just born. They're born lucky until I really understood my personal power. And now I know if, I do, if I'm, tiny bit jealous or envious i'm like oh i know if I, she can do it i can do it too i know if they can do it i can manifest that too and so be it because we can jealousy is not a bad thing guys it's only bad when you are doing evil things and sending evil comments to people and bullying people okay i have but i never do anymore it's okay jealousy honestly it's a good thing because you know why it shows up in your life jealousy shows up in your life when you know that you are ready for more in your life and when you see jealousy as a reason that it showed up because it's a sign that you are meant to be doing something more you're ready for something more it's amazing as long as you don't go in the opposite direction and you're just evil with it and being mean girl kind of vibes okay but jealousy is a signal so the second that you feel someone's lucky or you feel a little envious you got to go oh my god this is amazing i'm a match for this thing that this person has it means that i'm ready for more in my life and then the, the day that you actually decide to actually go for it it's your lucky day it's one of my favorite quotes when you decide to finally go for it that's your lucky day, the day you decide to go for it, okay? We create our luck because we realize, hey, I desire more, I want more, I have this jealousy, I have these people showing up in my life making me envious, okay, this means I'm a match for it, this means I'm next, let's go for it. And the day that you actually go all in, it's your lucky day. Powerful, I'm so excited. Hello, Amelia, I'm so happy you can catch the replay. So the replay will also be on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. We'll post things, me and my team. Um, and this will also be posted in the guide section of the high performance coaching community. So if you have to hop off or you're worried about making the next one live tomorrow, don't worry, I got you, it's all good, okay? So jealousy is a good thing. It's just so showing you that you are meant for more, okay? And then all you have to do is actually go for the thing and then the universe will conspire with you. When you think that someone is lucky because they have something, it's only also because you just forgot in that moment your personal power to create the same. Because we were all created equal power but different. You know, viewing certain people that they're lucky, it's honestly, when you look at someone, you're like, they're lucky. All you're looking is at the tip of the iceberg. That's all we see with people that were like, oh, they just have it all. We just see the tip of the iceberg. We don't see the bottom of the iceberg, which there's so much. The bottom of the iceberg is like the, the whole, this whole success. It's, it's, we don't see the person's courage. We don't see their commitment. We don't see that they went for it, that they had to expand their emotional capacity, their commitment that they had no matter what that they had to go through all these stages of mistakes, of failures, people's judgment and projection, the letdowns, the ebbs, the fluctuations. We don't see the constant mindset work that they do. We only see the top, we see the tip of the iceberg and we think they're just lucky, they must have been born with it, they have it all, but the thing is, 
the whole bottom of the iceberg is who they really are and why they're there. It's, it's all the inner game, it's the emotional intelligence, it's the courage, it's the mistakes, it's the failures, it's the no matter what. All the stages it takes to build success and to have it all is really the bottom of the iceberg. That is our luck. It's the iceberg illusion. Have you guys ever heard of that? The iceberg illusion of success. We only see the success. It's the top of the iceberg, but the whole bottom part we don't see. We don't see the journey. Luck is something that we actually create because we're all created equal in the image of God, source, universe, whatever you believe in. That woman that you see that has that sexy fit body and you want to be like, goddamn little lucky biatch <laughs> she worked for that body she showed up at the gym every day she ate well she did that mindset work the energetic work she took the action that coach that you love that's making six figures a month seven figures a year she built it she did the energetic work the mindset work she took action that woman with the most amazing romantic partner she co-created that relationship with that person no one is just given things she did the inner work she had goddess code with me. Then she elevated her emotional intelligence. She tapped into feminine magic. Like, and now she has this incredible partner. It's a co-creation. She did the inner work, she did the outer work, and she became a match for her dream partner. She created her luck. So powerful. I'm so happy, guys. She really did. She created her luck. Okay? No one's just born lucky. We're created equal with different powers, with different, sorry, with different gifts. Okay? I even thought, honestly, when I got into manifestation, I thought that like only the lucky people got it and it worked for them and somehow I was not lucky enough to get it because every time I did anything, I'm like, this just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. I don't know a lot, like I love the secret, but it just didn't really give me the tools, right? I thought people were just, some lucky. Some lucky people get manifestation and some of us don't. But then I really got it and I'm gonna share some profound understandings about it so that it works for you. I'm going to activate you during the next two days and I invite you to go deeper with me because I'm going to have a whole manifestation program coming out too. So if you know my personal story, this is amazing, but I will tell you what I have now and who I am now, I didn't even think that this was going to be possible for me at all. This August will mark four years from the time that I stepped into my personal power. I left a toxic relationship with two little girls. One was nursing with just clothes. I took out a bank loan. I started this business. I invested. I went first. I had blind faith. I don't know. I was like a little crazy, but I believed in this dream that I had to have this business, to be my own CEO, to make a lot of money, make a lot of impact, working from home, raising my kids. Like I, I built this whole thing. I, I hit six figures my second year of coaching, like as a single mom, and I didn't have support, and I was literally still battling postpartum depression, sleeping two, three hour intervals, like literally for four years, like legit, I was a science experiment, and there was no way I thought that I would get here, but I had this desire, and I just went for it. I just went for it, and here I am. I didn't think what I'm doing was possible to make multiple five figure, six figure months, like no sales ads, no cold messaging people, no website, like, Oh my gosh, like I got, in a, I got featured in a published magazine. I got interviewed for a documentary, which by the way, I forgot to tell you guys. So I declined this one, but we're going to be interviewed for another one because something didn't feel aligned. But how cool is that? Like, are you serious? Like I've been in this industry almost four years and I'm like, I'm going to be in a documentary. What the heck? I was in a published magazine. Like what the heck? Like some things just don't make sense. Like I have investments now. I'm growing my wealth like so much. I got myself out of debt. Like I never thought that I would be here. And I didn't even think that I would ever be able to speak with confidence because people always say right now that like, oh, you're so confident, how do you do? I was not like this. I was like the student at school who would lose marks because I would never be able to speak in front. Like I was so always scary, scared, how oh, shivers, oh, it's so incredible. And you're all, you're all a match to it. If you're here in this room, you're a match to this conversation. I want you to know that there's something here for you. And if you've been drawn to my work and you've been drawn to the things that I've manifested, you are a match for it. And that's why you're in my world. We don't connect with people. Otherwise, you're here for a reason, okay? I am engaged to the love of my life now. We're raising four kids and we're happy. You know how people always say relationships are hard, four kids, you're not gonna do it. There is no stress in our home. It's, it's amazing. There's so much love. Like two little kids, two teenagers, like romance every day, you know? Like, and this was built, honestly, from courage, from personal power, like understanding how to manifest, and I became a match for quantum leaps. But it takes courage, because you get to have it all, but you got to go for it. 
okay? And I'm telling you, even if you're like, I could never go live, I could never start a business, I could never speak, I swear to God, you can. If, oh gosh, I wish I could like scroll all the way in my high performance coaching community and show you my first live that were like two minutes, I'm red, I'm sweating, I can't even talk. I like, I was so nervous. I was the kid who would lose marks in school because I would not stand in front of people. I'd have a panic attack. If you told me like, there's gonna be this many people live right now, I would have pooped my pants four years ago. Like, no way, but I'm here. And I just want to be an example because I know it's easy when you come into my world right now. Oh, it's easy for her. She's lucky. She's like pretty. She's got nice branding. She speaks well. I built this. I built this. Build it and they will come. And that's the kind of mentality that we're going to get into today. But you got to have courage, okay? Every single one of us, we have untapped potential. Untapped. We're meant for so much more. But I'm telling you, the first thing we're going to really talk about is there are illusions that keep you asleep from your own magic and I'm going to help you untangle those okay and then I'm going to really like I'm going to riff on something about manifesting so you guys really get it and you might be one of those people who need to rewind it a few times and hopefully if you're leaning back and listening and it gets it oh my god things will start changing for you because it's not that complicated the people one percent some people have decided to manipulate manifesting and make it complicated so people would think that they're broken they can't do it and it's a bunch of bs there's actual also I say sinister, I know that's a hard word to say, but there's like weird programming and even the self-development world and the manifestation world making people feel like they can't do it because of like, you need to be positive 20 for seven and all the other things that they say. Hello, Tiffany. Uh, we stopped for food and saw you online. Yes, I love it. Alignment, alignment, alignment. Okay, so all of us, we're meant for more. And you've, I, I guarantee you've only tapped into a little bit of your potential. Okay, so we're going to talk about the bottom of the iceberg we're going to talk about the illusions okay we're going to talk about the inner work and i'm going to teach you how to actually align with what you want okay but any time that you now feel a little bit jealous or someone lands on your path a little bit envious, say oh, i'm a match for this i'm ready for more this is my sign if the lucky thing comes out remember i'm only seeing the tip of the iceberg okay and remember that you're just forgetting in that moment your personal power to create the same because we all have the exact same power. God, universe, source, whatever you believe in, then just create lucky people and everybody else isn't. That's just not how it works. Every one of us has the same power, okay? But we have illusions. We have subconscious programming. No one really told us emotional intelligence. There's a lot of things kind of holding us back, okay? But we get to have it all, okay? So even when I used to read manifestation, like books and watch stuff, like I just, I, it just didn't work for me. I would be like, universe, I'm ready. And then I would sit by the window. Where are you? Where are you? Like, where, where's the thing? Like, you know what I mean? Because everybody in the manifestation world, it's like Amazon. You just order it and it's just going to show up. Like, when though? When? I'm like, at the window, okay? I was ordering off the cosmic universe, Amazon, and things were not coming, okay? It, it's just, they miss out, they miss so many things in like law of attraction books. So it's not just about being positive, okay? It's not about visualization, okay? It's more than that. It's about also holding polarity. It's about holding duality. It's about taking action. It's about courage. It's about actually becoming an energetic match to the thing, okay? But I'm telling you right now, if you ever heard that you need to be positive 24 seven, that is one of those weird programming in the self-development world that is so not true. It's not true. And you know that because have you ever met someone that's happy 24 seven? Of course not. Like life always has ebb and flow. Businesses ebb and flow. There's always things that happen. If you have kids, things happen. You get triggered, you get judged. There is no 24 seven consistency. Is that achieve for sure? Yes. So how do you stay positive in life when things are breaking, are breaking down around you, right? So we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about duality and emotional intelligence too, okay? But the thing that is actually absolutely true about manifesting is the thing that every single successful and wealthy person says. And they say this, your thoughts create your reality. Every single successful, wildly wealthy person says this. And then every single not so successful, not so rich person always says it's rubbish. Isn't that interesting? But it's true. It's true. I should be the person that thought it was rubbish because I didn't get how to do it. But now I get it. And I'm going to get you to get it at, in, at some point in this master class, okay? It's my mission for you to really get this, okay? Because it's so wild what starts to happen when it really, really lands for you.
but your thoughts 100% create your life. They create all your emotions, the actions you take, the energetic frequency that you put out. But it's not just also thought alone. It's the repetitive thoughts that you have, charged with feelings, okay? Do you wonder, do, are you ever surprised that the thing that you manifest the most are the things that you don't want, the things that you stress about, the things that you fear, the things you have doubt about? Of course not. Of course not. Because it's really hard for people to believe in things that you have no evidence in yet. It's hard as humans because we, we like math, we like logic, we like graphs, we want to see it all outlined. It's so hard for people, especially if you're really logical, to believe in something you can't see. And most people on the planet operate. If I can't see it, I can't believe it. I'm so happy you came to my world to guide me into my duality. Ah, oh, me too, Scarlett. Yeah, I'm so happy. Tomorrow will be an amazing emotional intelligence and other things tomorrow and collapsing time. Like so much stuff's coming through on this masterclass. So just lean back. Thank you for tagging guys, I love you. So most people in the world, they operate. If I can't see it, I can't believe it. If no one in my family or no one in my social circle has ever done the thing that I'm desiring to do, then it's not possible. If no one in my family has ever beaten obesity, generational obesity, no one has ever made more than 60K a year, then it's not possible for me. I don't know anyone who makes millions of dollars working a few hours a week. It's not possible. It is 100% possible. Do you know, guys, that even your genes don't predict the way you look, the way your body's structured? Epigenetics proves this. But you have to become the kind of person, and even especially in this masterclass, to really lean back and let go of everything you think you know about the world and really listen to this. Because there's a lot of programming that's so not true, keeping us really stuck. Love collapsing time. Me too. I have an awesome riff about that too. All coming, all coming, okay? But you got to allow yourself to imagine and dream about things that you want. But we honestly, we don't do that. We're so afraid that most of the time, the, the time now that we have that creates everything, we waste it thinking about failure, thinking about what didn't work in the past, bringing hostages from the past. We're afraid to believe in things if we don't have evidence in them. But manifestation is creating something from nothing. The evidence is the manifestation. So yeah, you gotta believe in it before it comes because once the evidence is here, it's like, I know it's here. Man, the evidence is the manifestation, but you have to imagine it. You gotta feel into it. You gotta take a line of action and then it comes. But it's really hard for people because people believe, oh my God, I have to be happy 24 seven. I gotta be thinking about it 24 seven. If not, I break it. Like it's, so, it's such BS. I swear to God, there's someone who wants to even control the self-development world because it's true. If someone tells you you have to be happy 24 seven and only think 24 seven dream thoughts, okay? Which you know it's not possible because life happens and you have kids and marriages and all the things, okay? What does it do to someone? If they can't do it, then they have reasonable doubt. Like this doesn't work for me. I feel like I'm broken. I, it doesn't work for me. I can't be happy 24 seven. I must be broken. And the moment that you create any reasonable doubt, of course you're gonna stop dreaming of more, wishing for more, desiring more, because it's like, I can't be happy 24 seven. I guess this is not gonna work for me. I guess I'm broken. What a great way to control the world. <gasps> people still spill this in the self-development world, the manifestation, this is how they control people and they want them to buy more things, more things, instead of actually telling them the truth. This circulates, which is sad, but I'm here to be like, it's a bunch of bullshit. None of those people who say they're happy 24 seven are happy 24 seven. There is no way, no way, unless they never leave their room and they sit in a room, I don't know, never dealing with people or going out in the world. You guys know, if you're a parent, like your kids, they bring things to you all the time. Your partner does, you're like, it just doesn't happen, right? So we're gonna dive into that piece tomorrow about the really the energetics and how to like get yourself in alignment, all the things in quantum leaping. But for today, I want to fo focus on how do you have a quantum leap and how do you actually manifest the thing you want. And if you've never heard of what quantum leap means, it means that like you desire something and the thing that you attract is so huge, you're like, oh, how the hell did this happen? It feels like a miracle. You're just like, I wanted a few thousand dollars extra in my business and then you hit a six figure month and you're like, oh my God, quantum leap. It's like, how the heck? It's like, I want to be on a podcast and all of a sudden you're in a published magazine. What? You go from 2K followers to 50K followers overnight of real followers, that's a quantum leap. You have 100 views and all of a sudden you have 100K views, quantum leaps. You skip over a bunch of steps and it's like, boom, how did this happen? You just became an energetic match for it. And it's true, sometimes you, 
manifest things like this and sometimes you got to prove it and sometimes there's things you got to do and you got to grow your capacity but no matter what whatever the heck you desire or dream you are matched for it okay so how do you manifest the things you actually want because you already know you're all manifesting all the time so if you don't have what you want it's because you're not focused on what you actually want you're focused on the lack of it or you're in your subconscious mind looping things on autopilot or thinking about the things in the past and who did you wrong and bringing hostages. Those are the things that make our energy really heavy. My life changed when I realized that like what I thought was true for me and what I thought was possible for me was a complete illusion. There are illusions that are created in the world, just like the whole 24 seven positivity thing. And these illusions actually make you think that they're true. There are false beliefs and they actually, what they do is they create your own self-fulfilling prophecies in your life. And what a self-fulfilling prophecy in your life is like a prediction that comes true as a result of someone telling you based on your genetics, based on where you come from. It's like an expectation. Someone tells you this is true for you and so be it. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy because you believed it to be true, even though it's not true. A self-fulfilling prophecy would be like your family genes determine who you're going to be and what you're going to do. Your family's financial, you know, like past determine. So when people tell you that this is going to happen to you and you believe it, you create a self-fulfilling prophecy, but they're based on usually false illusions. And then you create evidence of it and then you're like, of course I'm right, right? When your family says that generational obesity is in our family and you're not going to escape it, you're going to create that in your life. It's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. I'm so happy you're online too. Hello. I must watch the replay. This is so good. I'm so happy. Okay. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? And then what happens is we act in alignment with this false belief because people told us this is what you're going to be and this is what you're going to do. But then we act in alignment with it. We create evidence and so be it. Of course it's true. Why would I even question that? And one of my favorite quotes by Carl Jung is until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it faith. And there's a lot of unconscious things looping in your, in your mind right now. If you do not have what you want, it's because you have illusions, false beliefs, false self-fulfilling prophecies that make you think and act in alignment with those beliefs. And every time you think and act in alignment with those false beliefs, you create evidence which solidifies, I'm right, this is true. And one of the biggest illusions that human fall into is what I see around me is all that must be possible. It's the iceberg illusion. It's like only what I see is true, but there's so much more. There's so much more. And all that matters though, I'm gonna tell you guys, is not what people think, it's always about what you think, okay? What you think about, literally, you create, okay? Like, we have been coded and programmed so, on so many things in our life, on so many things. Like, from the people that are the most important people in our life, they have programmed us to believe what's possible. And sadly, we take on their limitations. And then we create evidence. And then it becomes our truth. And then we pass it down generationally and generationally. This is why you see families get stuck in the same looping patterns. No generational wealth, obesity, all the things. Because we keep creating evidence. It's true. Look around you. And they solidify those false self-fulfilling prophecies. Okay? A self-fulfilling prophecy. Like, so instead of thinking and acting in alignment with your own human potential, we act in alignment with other people's limitations. And we live out our false self-fulfilling prophecies. And I promise you, you did not come here just to do that, okay? And one of my favorite analogies, and I have some cool analogies for you guys, that it really lands for you, is that the way that you're programmed is, let's take the analogy of the flea in the jar. Have you guys ever heard of this? I was looking up all these cool animal analogies the other day, and I'm like, oh, this is amazing. This is exactly how humans operate, too. So, if you, so naturally, a flea can jump two feet, okay? But if you put a flea in a jar and you close the lid, you have a little jar like this, it's going to like hop up and down for a while, but eventually it will stop jumping high because it keeps smashing its head on the top and knowing, hey, I can't go any further. Hello, Jennifer. And then so it just stops, right? It just only jumps right before it hits and then you can put another flea in there and then it will start trying to jump two feet, but it can't. And then it starts to watch the other person and by behavior of the other person, it starts to learn, okay, I guess we're not allowed to be, we can't jump two feet and it starts to jump the same height. The, the fleas quickly get into a comfort zone. 
So when the jars like, and then even when they take off the lid, they let those fleas out, not a single flea will leave its comfort zone. It is now programmed in its limitation. Now it's living out its self-fulfilling prophecy, the false illusion. Now, if those fleas had babies in the jar, okay, this is like you and your family and your generational like programming. So if those fleas had babies, those babies, they would never even know that they were designed to jump two feet. They would never even try. They wouldn't even know to do it. They just jump the same height as the lid. They let them go and they jump the same height as the lid because they learn from their parents, from behavior, from programming. Even if they're released, they're designed for two feet, but they won't do it. They're programmed now. They're living out a self-fulfilling prophecy just like you are. Similarly, by your family, of people close to you, of people what they've told you that your potential is, that's not your potential that's their limitations and they role modeled what's possible for you and you believed it was true and then you created evidence do, 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 do. that's exactly what happens we grow up watching people we love try to be successful and they fail we see people try things that we love people around us and it doesn't work for them so we believe they can't do it i can't do it just like the flea the flea finally leaves the jar but still won't ju jump two feet it's designed to jump two feet but it's programmed now that I can't. They don't even know. And it's similar with you. Like, you are limitless, okay? You can have anything you want. You are a creator. You are made in the image of God, source, universe. You can create anything you want. But you don't believe that, and you have a hard time getting out of the programming because self-fulfilling prophecies, people programmed into you. But you're designed to be rich and wealthy and have it all. Have it all. And if you tell me, I don't believe it. I don't believe I can t jump two feet you're designed to, and you just have to go for it. They're just limits that are forcing you to stay small. And the wild thing is, like, the fleas will never try. They will just live out their comfort zone. Okay? Most people will never even find out what's possible for them in their lifetime because they're so coded for comfort. Have you, have you seen this in our society, how much people are coded for comfort? We're so afraid to take risks. We are so coded as a humanity now, like, to avoid all kinds of pain as much as possible. I want to stay comforting and cozy because I want to avoid pain. We're coded to avoid failure and pain at all costs. I was having this conversation with my private client, Katie, on Monday, and we were talking about like emotional intelligence, and we we're saying how the biggest issue with the world changing is our unwillingness to sit in discomfort. The issue is we don't have what we want on this planet is because we're not willing to sit with the uncomfortable things. We're not willing to sit with things that hurt. We're programmed for comfort and avoid pain at all costs. We avoid. We avoid even things that we don't understand. Like people, some are not, some people are not even ready for this conversation. Yeah, their thoughts stop them to keep them safe. Yeah, right? We're, we're, we avoid discomfort. And instead of, like, it's because it's crazy. Look at humanity. Like, we have AI intelligence. We do all this thing. But as humans, we still don't grow our emotional intelligence. We don't want to become stronger. We don't want to sit with things that hurt. Like even healing, you want to do deep healing work. You want to heal the things. You got to sit with discomfort of healing the past. You got to sit with that, but we don't want to because it hurts and we don't want to look at that, right? We want big businesses. We want global impact, but then we don't want to do the uncomfortable things like show up live and speak our truth, invest. We want dream relationships. But we don't want to sit with the discomfort of healing the relationship we have with ourselves because every relationship that we get into mirrors our stuff. Your romantic relationships will always tell you where you need inner child healing. But then we don't want to, we want dream relationships and then things are not working because we haven't been able to sit with the discomfort of actually healing the relationship we have with ourselves. We're saying, I'm doing everything to change, Alina, but we're not actually doing anything to change. We're actually not doing anything different. Because it's hard. It's hard to do something new. It's hard to look at the past. It's hard to look at the wounds. It's hard to do something new. It's uncomfortable. And yet, you guys know everything that you want is on the other side of being of your comfort zone. We need to be more emotionally strong as a human race. Because the only way we change our reality is when we start to think and do things differently outside of our comfort zone, outside of the autopilot subconscious mind. We got to be willing to be uncomfortable. We, we aren't experienced the best that this planet has because we're afraid of being uncomfortable. 
We aren't willing to heal and reprogram our way of thinking, heal the past, let go of people, forgive, because we aren't even willing to sit with what hurts. We avoid discomfort and pain so much, and yet at the same time we're wishing for more, but we're not willing to be uncomfortable to get there. Growth comes out of pain. Yeah. You have to be so willing to be super uncomfortable to see any kind of differences in your, any kind of different results in your life. Even inner work, you got to be willing to sit with the uncomfortable to have the breakthrough. You got to sit with what hurts. You want to change your relationship. You have something hard to tell your partner, but you're worried about his response, but you know, you have to, it's the only way you got to be willing to be uncomfortable with whatever response comes out. You have to let go of a team, an employee. You have to have that uncomfortable conversation. You got to put a boundary up for some with someone. It's going to be uncomfortable. The conversation is going to be uncomfortable, but guess what? That's the only way that your life changes. It's the only way that your life gets better. If we want quantum leaps, like how did this happen? We have to be willing to sit with things like that make us uncomfortable. We have to be willing to make big, bold moves that make no sense. And we got to be willing to sit when it hurts and be okay with that. We got to change our response to pain and understand that if we want more in life, it's going to be through sitting and being with the discomfort that comes with it. I challenge you to sit with discomfort, sit with pain, because guess what? That's where you find all your power. When you don't run away and you don't numb it out and you actually just sit with the pain and discomfort, this is where you find all your personal power. And then you realize, holy crap, I'm so strong. Send me more universe. I got this. And you're going to learn tomorrow about the art of walking with polarity because if you're those, one of those people who want everything, like wealth, magic, impact, lots of money, it's going to come with you stretching your emotional capacity, both pain and both pleasure at the same time. And you got to grow both of it. If you want to hit the best feelings this life has to give, you got to be okay with the pain and the hurt, the worst kind of feelings. Yes, 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 Maxine. Hello, gorgeous. There's more to you. There's more to you. And if you want more and, and your life is not good right now, like sit with that. Think about that. I promise you, you can handle more than you think, but all of your power is in the discomfort in having boundaries and saying no in having the courage to say yes to something you've never done in sitting with a failure, a mistake. Yeah, that's where all of your power is. All of your power is found in discomfort. Your quantum leaps are found in the discomfort, saying yes to something you've never done. Part of your homework is this. If you know you want more, you know your design room for more, which you are, what's your next step that you know that's really uncomfortable, but you know it's your next level move? Go do that. Go sit with that. I want you to find your courage and I want you to go for it. And then when the discomfort happens, when some things just like didn't work out, sit with that. Cause that's where all your power is. You are limitless. Every single dream that you have, every draw, every desire you have, you have the power, you have the gifts, you are a match for it. There is no other reason, no other reason. Desires are alive. They pick you. You are the energetic match, but you got to work on your emotional intelligence. You got to work on your courage. You got to be okay with being uncomfortable. And then you got to work on the beliefs that you have about what's possible for you. Because the only reason you don't have what you want is because you don't even know that something greater is possible for you because of the programming. You're like the flea who grew up in the jar. You don't even know that you're designed for two feet or it's because of the programming or it's because you had a failure in your past, but you're designed to have more just like the flea. It's the conditioning. It makes you think that you're, you can't do it. And the other thing that keeps us stuck and keeping you from what you really, really want to have in this lifetime is this, you've already experienced a failure, some sort of pain in the past. And now you're coded with, I want to avoid pain and failure for the rest of my life. So I will never try anything ever again because past evidence showed me I failed and I felt pain and I cannot handle that anymore and I won't do it ever again. So I'm going to stay comfortable. A perfect example of this is the elephant. Okay. You guys ever heard of the elephant analogy? I love elephants. Rhea loves elephants. I used to love elephants. They're very emotional. They're like one of the most emotional, like 
animals on the planet, and they're actually one of the, the animals on the planet that have the best memories, the best memories. So keep that in mind. So when they train elephants for a circus, they put the little baby elephant, they tie its leg, you know, arm, its leg, right? And they put a stake really deep in the ground so that the actual ele like baby elephant can't move, right? And it will try, right? It will try to get away. It wants to go playing. It wants to go play. It wants to do a thing. But the more the elephant keeps trying, it keeps failing because they do put that stake in the ground really far, right? And it keeps trying and it keeps trying and it hurts and he, he keeps failing and it's disappointing. And then eventually the little elephant stops trying. I keep failing at this, this isn't working. And then the elephant grows to what, two tons? And guess what? The elephant, the two ton elephant, the growing elephant, it's the same stake that was holding him when it was a baby elephant, which he could easily pull out now, but the elephant doesn't. Do you guys really, do you guys notice that? Look in the circuses, well I don't ever, would never go to circus, but you know, back in the day, I don't even know if they do circuses anymore, but that's what they used to do. It's the same stake that the baby elephant was attached to, but the elephant has this insane memory. And now because of the memory of the past failure and the pain and the disappointment, he doesn't even want to try. How many things are you not willing to go for in your life right now? Because in the past you had a failure, there was pain, there was disappointment. And now you don't go for things. And disappointment is a huge one for us females, right? Once we're disappointed, it's like, I never want to have my heart broken again. So I'm going to put out a fortress of boundaries, not do it in a nice way. And I'm going to keep everybody else. Oh, I'm going to put all these walls up and stay safe and comfortable, but always desiring more, but feeling miserable because I'm in the comfort zone because I don't want to be disappointed. This is what we do. You're like the elephant. You have insane memory like the elephant. And so something didn't work out for you. And now you don't want to be disappointed and you don't want to be in pain. Good analogy. So before I go into how failures are actually good for you and they actually help you collapse time because then you learn how not to do certain things. Okay. But before I riff on that, I want to move into the most important part of this masterclass. So just a little recap, two reasons. First thing is like, you're like the flea that was born in a jar. You don't even know that more is possible. You don't even know that you're designed for more. You don't even try. You see the tip of the iceberg. That's all you see. That's all you think that you're going to be made for. You're like living out your family's limitations and everybody around you. Okay. And the second thing that keeps you stuck that you're not creating more in your life is like, you're the elephant. You had a past failure, disappointment, and now you won't try anything because you don't want to feel that way. So those are the two biggest reasons that right now you possibly are stuck. Okay. So I want to move into something else really quickly. And then you're going to see how this all ties together. There's always a sequence to my madness. Okay. So manifesting, you are all manifesting. I'm manifesting everything I'm talking about. I'm going to start seeing elephants now and all the things watch. There's probably a flea in my life now because every time I think about things, I manifest them. Okay. So we are always manifesting the things that we're speaking, thinking about feeling into, right? But a lot of us have a hard time manifesting the things that we really, really want. So lean back and you might want to rewind this, but this is so simple. Okay. Again, the most successful, wildly wealthy, Rich people say this, your thoughts create your reality. And everybody else who's not successful says it's a bunch of BS, but they are right. They do. You're always manifesting what you are thinking in the right now, the right now, all the power is in the now. You guys have heard that, right? The power is in the now. But the thing is we do manifest on different timelines. Sometimes you think of something and you ask for it and it's like, Universe is like, you're an energetic match. Here it is. But sometimes you got to go prove it. This is why the prove it master class will be really good for you guys to watch on the back end of this. Okay. But really everything you speak about, think about you're creating on a different timeline right now in this moment. And the thing that we manifest the most that people manifest the most is their fears, their worries, their doubt, their past, because they bring a lot of things from the past, whatever that you interact with the most entangle with the most you manifest. I have been so good at being energetically mastered on focusing what I want. Okay. But I manifest something I did not want yesterday, but of course I did. And I was like, so upset about it. Something really shitty happened and this person manifested in my life. And I was like, 
at first I got mad and then I was like, oh yeah, I was going to talk about how like we focus on the fears and the things and then they show up in our life. So of course God sent it to me because it always happens. Anytime I teach on anything, and if you're a mentor, let me know if you resonate, but anytime I teach or coach on something, I'm tested with it. If I start teaching about like leadership, I'll get tested there. Relationships, I'll get tested there. And it's like, okay, thank you universe. But of course, if I'm going to teach you something, I better lead myself through the same thing, right? So I was thinking about a situation got brought to me. Um, my little girls have went on a vacation today, but it was like a last minute notice and I wasn't given details and I'm the mom. And then there was this other person that I started thinking about that's like stressed me out. And then literally I'm getting my nails done at the nail salon. I haven't seen this person in like a year. <laughs> I'm sitting there in the front and like I was sitting by where they picked the nails and like in walks the person I was just thinking and speaking about yesterday that I did not want to see right there feeling their vibes, and I'm like, why? Of course, but why? But yes, of course, I don't even ask why or how. I'm like, I thought about it, I spoke about it, here it is, of course, perfect alignment for this thing. This is what happens, guys. Anytime that you interact with your fears, with your worries, I don't want this thing to happen, like you are putting your thoughts, they're getting energetically charged, boom, there it is. What we think about, what we speak about, what we interact with, what we entangle with, the most, we create and you know what we create the most is failing failing that's the thing that we actually manifest the most because that's the thing we interact with the most this is what we say all the time we're like i want this big thing this dream god universe and then two seconds later or a day later it's like why isn't this working why am i not there what if this doesn't work why did this bad thing happen how do i not fail god why isn't it coming where is it you think about failure more than you think about what you want all the time. You think about the failing. You will say, I want this thing, and then immediately you'll ask yourself how. And you know why you ask how? Because we want to know how not to fail. That's the only reason you ask how. How? How do I, how do I launch, aka how do I not fail at launch? How do I cook potatoes, aka how do I not mess this up? So the things that we manifest the most, are our fears, our worries, our doubt, our failure. How do, not, how do I not fail? Or why is this not happening yet? This is what we interact with the most. This is what loops in your thoughts the most. Why do I not have it yet? Why am I failing? Why is it work for her and not me? Why is it not working? And then you're wondering why the things you really want are not happening. Like when you think about the things that you want, dream partner, dream business, six figure business, seven figure business, like you immediately will start figuring out what if it, what, what if it doesn't work? That's your, your second thought that you have. You're not in alignment at all. And then we ask how. We're trying to figure out how not to fail. And all we do when we think about the how not to fail and why isn't that working and why does she have it, all we think about is failure, 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 failure. We're energetically saying to the universe, I don't want failure. And the universe says, I don't understand negation. Failure is all it hears. What is the same about your partner cheating? Do you manifest that? You're thinking about wondering if partners are cheating on you? So um, this is a great question. So this, the partner cheating thing is two things, okay? A, you either have an intuition, you got to trust your intuition. Or B, the reason that it will ever, okay, and this is like a next level way to view it, but I believe this. So either you have an intuition, and if it shows up that your person cheats on you is because you entangled with the fear. You were so worried about your partner cheating that it ends up happening to you. And the reason it happens for you, and so in my teaching, I always say everything happens for you. And the reason it happens for you is because the universe wanted to show you that you will survive it. When we fear something so much, we don't want this thing to happen. We don't want this thing to happen. The thing is we interact with it and then the universe sends it to us. But it happened for us because the thing is you will survive it. And sometimes we manifest the worst thing that we don't want happening, like our partner cheating, and then it happens for us just for us to realize I'm okay. And so moving on in my life, I'm never going to fear about this again because I know I'm going to be okay. And that's kind of why it happens. So coming back to this, the universe is telling you you'll survive it. It is. If you're worried about like bankruptcy or someone leaving you, whatever, sometimes you've interacted with it so much that the universe is like, I'm going to have to put you through this 
just so that you see that you can get through it and then you will no longer fear it. Because once you go through something really hard like that, you're not gonna really fear it anymore once you do the healing work. And because otherwise, sometimes if it doesn't happen, you're gonna spend your whole life stressed and worrying about it. I definitely had the intuition. I love you and I'm sending you so much strength, Jen. You got this and you are surrounded by the most amazing people here. You got this. So now you just have to have a next level conversation. You got this. You will survive this and you will no longer fear it because once we go through the thing that we feared the most, we realize I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna survive it and it's gonna be okay. I didn't think, honestly, do you wanna know why I manifested being a single mom, completely in debt, alone, no support, is because I feared that the most. Even growing up, I remember like that would be the worst thing to be a single mom in debt, no support. Like that would be just like the worst. And so of course the universe sent it to me and guess what? I survived it and now I don't fear it. Even if it ever happened again, I don't fear it. The worst things that honestly, like some of your worst fears, I promise you, you're gonna survive it. And so that's why the universe sends it to us. We interact with it and the universe is like, I'm sending it to you now so that you see you are gonna be okay. And then later on, you move through it and you see, I can handle anything, I'm gonna be okay, I'm not gonna fear this anymore because I freaking survived it and that fear goes away. Thank you, oh, same, I love you. So, what you focus on, what you interact with, usually are your fears, your doubts, your worries, it's failing. And the thing is with the universe, guys, is it doesn't understand negation, okay? So when you're saying, I don't want debt, all the universe hears is debt, okay? Universe, I don't wanna fail. Okay, universe is like, I don't understand negation. All I hear is failure, here you go. Every time you're saying or thinking about not failing or how not to fail or why isn't it working, failure, failure, failure. That's all you're energetically communicating to the universe. Everything is about failure. So if everything is about failure, everything is about failure. You create exactly it, the thing that you interact with the most. Stop asking how to manifest. You already are manifesting. How, okay, okay, Alina, how do I manifest what I want? Focus on what you want. Focus on what you want. But how do I not manifest? Stop talking about failure. <laughs> it's not working. I know because you keep talking about it not working. It's literally that simple and so hard. The universe doesn't understand negation. All you, it hears when you're like, why isn't it working? When is it coming? Why is it working for her? Why is it taking so long? Failure, 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 failure. You're calling the universal hotline. Hey, universe. So like, I want this thing, but I like, don't want to fail. I don't want to hurt. Like, universe is like failure, 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 failure. Bingo. Uh, I manifested being married with children. Wasn't, and when it wasn't what I wanted as a kid, but manifestation ever, the universe. Oh, it's so funny, Scarlett. Chris is like, yeah, bingo. You... Okay, the now, the power of now, okay? Everything right now, this is where your power is. And when you spend all of your now thinking about how not to fail, that you didn't want to fail, thinking about the past, it's all you're creating. You spend all of your now thinking about the things you don't want. They are, that's your thoughts. It's like, I don't know how to blah, blah, blah. I just don't know what to do, blah, blah, blah. What if I fail, blah, blah, blah. What if it hurts, failure, failure, fail. Why isn't it working? Look, Alina, that's not working. I know you keep saying it's not working. What's wrong with me? Here's the other thing we do a lot. We beat ourselves up, what's wrong with me? What is wrong with me? Do you think that helps you to say that? No. Why isn't it working for me? It works for her. I'm doing all the things the other coaches are doing. Why isn't it working? Because you keep saying, why isn't it working? <laughs> you're talking about failure and then you're asking yourself, what is wrong with me? And you're beating yourself up. The power of now. Hello, Donna. Hello, Don. <laughs> All of your attention is, how do I not fail? Why isn't it working? What is wrong with me? And then you're shocked that you keep manifesting the things you do not want. All you do is think about the things you don't want. You speak about it. You go tell your husband, hey, it's not working. Like now you're speaking it. Your throat chakra is activated. You're not in alignment at all. Anytime you say, yeah, I do believe Alina. I'm so positive. But the thing, but, but, but the, th the but, the but, but the thing is you don't believe that like you're not in energetic alignment. Yeah, but, but you're not in alignment now. But, 
Like, no, <laughs> no, you're not in alignment. You're in alignment with failure. But the thing is, you're in alignment with failure, so failure's coming your way. Anytime you're like, I believe, I'm a match for my dream. And then you say, but like, but like, you don't believe, you doubt. Why isn't it working? How do I not fail? That's exactly what you're manifesting. And then you literally, because you keep talking about it not working and checking up on it, is it working? What's wrong with me? You, then you create evidence. And then you come to me and you say, I told you so, it's not gonna work. I know it's not gonna work because all you kept talking about how it's not gonna work and you kept checking on it. Are you shocked? You created the evidence of failure because all you did is talk about failure. I, I, like all, you, all most people do is they utilize the now where all your power is, where all your manifestation power is right now, right? And we're thinking and speaking about failure. Why is it not working? What's wrong with me? How do I not fail? But what if, but, but, but what if with the past shit, people in your past, the hostages, and then you're wondering why nothing in your timeline ahead of you is like great things aren't happening. They're not. That's how you utilize your now. And you're wondering why does now still look like now? I don't know. Everything you think about, speak about, entangle with, interact with right now, you're creating on a future timeline. I did everything right, Alina, and it's not working. I was so positive, but look, it's not working. Look, <laughs> everything you're talking about and thinking about and checking about is failure, 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 failure. And then you're creating evidence of it. And then you're saying, oh, I was right. See, I told you. You prove yourself right. I know. You kept talking about it. You kept interacting with it. I want a successful seven-figure business, an amazing successful dream relationship. But every time I do, it's failing. Shocking. Shocking. So Alina, this is like the next question people have, how do I not think about failing? Stop thinking about failing. Like, like how? I don't know. Distract yourself with something else. Utilize your now by doing something else. But here's the best way to utilize your now, okay? Use your, like the now, to think and imagine about the things that you want, feel about it, or you're gonna take action in building it. Those are the only two, op these are the only two options you have to create the life of your dreams. Either you're being, thinking and feeling and imagining the things that you want, or you're taking action on building the thing because you are co-creating all the time with the universe and other people. You, this is like energetic mastery. When you can do this and every single time you catch yourself with something on a, and like that's not alignment, I'm failing, what if it's, what, stop yourself, interrupt that thought and utilize every conscious moment to either be thinking, imagining, feeling about the things you want or you're taking action to build it. I used to think about not failing and keep asking myself, is it working? When is it coming, universe? Looking out the window, where's this cosmic universe? Like, where's Amazon? Spinning my wheels, manifesting the thing, and then wondering why my life's not changing. And now I've become so energetic and mastered, and honestly, I'm not a genius. This takes, because there's lots of subconscious stuff, guys. But every time that I'm consciously aware, I utilize my now to either be sitting and thinking and dreaming about the things that I want, or I'm utilizing my now moment to take inspired action. You know, when you get a nudge, a ping to do something, go do that. And if your brain says, but how? Go find out. So every time my, I didn't have a nudge, but I was like, but how? I'm going to go figure it out. I went and found, and found out. I went to figure it out. Or I hired someone who did, who did the thing and learned from them. Or I tried a bunch of things out to make mistakes. You just got to be brave. One, one, one. Make, like, make your wish. Always, always. Okay. I was watching Ted. Does anybody watch Ted Lasso? Watching Ted Lasso, the last episode. I don't start laughing because Ted Lasso was like, oh, they're like, when can we make an appointment with you? And he's like, just not at 11, 11. That's when I make my wishes. And I started laughing. I'm like, because he's like, that's all you always do. I'm like, I know. No, it was manifest. So. You got to, you have two options. So when you're feeling good, you got to be thinking and feeling and imagining things you want. And then when you're not, you don't have time for the sitting and thinking about the things, you go take action. 
And if you don't know how, go figure it out. Go make mistakes. This is the thing with about failure is you got to go make, make mistakes to go figure it out. You got to be brave. That's the way that you collapse time. You just got to go make some mistakes and then you figure out what not to do. Or if you really want to collapse time, go hire the person, the mentor, the coach who's done it, the thing that you want and go learn from them. Or you go make your own mistakes and figure it out. Either way, you got to be brave and you got to go for it. And then you got to be focusing on what you want. Focusing on not what you want, failure, failure, universe, like, no, <laughs> no, you have two options. That's it. Okay. Figure it out. Go for it. Hire someone. Be thinking about the thing. That's it. This is energetic mastery. It's not any more complicated than this. Hi, Alina. Hi, Alina. She's the best. Oh, thank you, Lindsay. I love you. Yes, a new moon eclipse today. Amazing. Okay. This is how you create quantum leaps too. When you just go for it and all you think about is the thing that you want. There is no failure. There's nothing. It's just the thing you want and you go for it. You hire the mentor. You start the business. You go live. You be brave. You figure it out. That's how you have quantum leaps. Can you be willing to make mistakes till you figure out the how? Can you go again if something didn't work out for the first time? Can you keep trying over and over again and not be like a baby elephant? For the rest of my life, I will never try anything again because I tried a bunch of times. When I was six, Alina, and it didn't work out. That was when you were six. You were not the same person. The baby elephant version of you from the past who tried and failed and had pain and disappointment, she, he is not the same person right now that you are today. Do you know how much stronger that you are right now? We got to stop protecting ourselves from pain because everything that you want is on the other side of discomfort. All the bliss, the magic, the romance, the dreams, the money, the wealth, it's all on the other side of discomfort. You're going to be okay. You're going to make mistakes and then you're going to be okay. This chick, this is why I love you. I love you too. It's all here for us. Absolutely. Can you be brave then? If you don't want to make mistakes yourself and figure things out, Go hire someone, make the investment, go learn from someone who's done it, go walk with them, go calibrate with them. But I promise you, you're not the same baby elephant, okay? You are wiser and stronger and smarter than you have ever been and now you just need to be more brave. Your life is either about thinking about it not working, avoiding pain and failure, or you're gonna make your entire life about building your dreams. What are you choosing in your conscious moment? It not working, avoiding pain and failure, or you're thinking about what you want and you're building your dreams. You have just the two options to do. Every single now moment, those two things. Think about it not working or go build your dreams. What are you choosing? Is your life gonna be about failure, avoiding pain, or is your life about your dreams? Is it gonna be about building your dreams? thinking about your dreams, desiring more, or is it gonna be about, why is it not working? I must like be the only one. Haha, <laughs> the tower just fell for me last night. Let's see what happens. Oh, what are you choosing? Everything happens now in this conscious moment. It takes energetic mastery to constantly either be just thinking about what you want or taking action on building it. It does, but I promise you the more conscious you are in your life, the more you're going to be creating magic in your life. Good things are built from good thoughts and good aligned action. Good things don't come from what's wrong with me? Why isn't it working? Where is it? Like failure, failure, failure. Fa Nothing good comes from that. You're either thinking about it not working, avoiding pain, thinking about failure. Why isn't it working? What's wrong with me? or your life is going to be about building your dreams and so be it. Good things are built from good thoughts and good actions. If you want to manifest what you want, you need to be thinking about what you want or you need to be taking action to go find out how to make it happen. Do I need to hire someone or do I need to just make a bunch of mistakes until I figure it out? Those are your only options. That's all you should ever be using the now for. That's it. The things that you, gratitude, the things that you want or you're going out there and building your dream life. That's it. Why are we wasting time on what happened in the past? Like I am such a next level person that I will tell you right now. And I was on my way to go be 
a therapist. I was going to do a master's. And then I just, I do not believe in talk therapy. I'm a big believer. Like go look at the trauma, go heal it. And then you never go back. It's like running a race. How are you ever going to win the race when you keep looking in the past? Every time you look in the past, you're thinking about that stuff. You're creating more of it. It's taking over your energy. Go back there once, heal it, and that's it. And then all you think about the past now is the good stuff. Like that's how next level I am. I do this work with my clients all the time. We do the healing work. We cry, we tap, we release, we forgive, and that's it. We never talk, speak about any of the bad shit ever again. Anytime we go back to the past, we only think about the love. Even if you're, you didn't like your daddy, think about when your daddy did hug you. That's it. We're only collecting the things that we're grateful for and happy for. Nothing bad in your past, talking about it, thinking about it is going to be good for your future. Heal it, tap, cry, and then we don't go back anymore. We go forward. We think about the things we want and we only remember the good memories. That is it. Look for it. Absolutely. This is why, have you noticed? And I know because I have some uh, like friends that are moving from psychology PhDs into the coaching industry because they're like, we're moving people faster. I've been working with some people that have been in years of therapy. They take th like they work with me for three months. They do a few programs. They they're moved on. They're they're finding dream partners, creating all the success. Because all that bad stuff in the past, what does that do for you? Nothing. Release it. Let it go. Put it down. And tomorrow I'm going to talk about how we make things heavy by bringing that stuff. But that doesn't help you. Let it go. Look forward. Focus on only what you want. Be grateful in the now. If you can't focus on what you want, then just always be grabbing gratitude. What am I grateful for right now? Let me be here with my partner. That, these are, like, so you have three options. You're either gonna be grateful for what you have, you're thinking and desiring what you want, or the third thing is you're going and building the dream. You're taking action. That's it. And you're not gonna be perfect with this. This is why it takes energetic mastery. You're going to have fears and doubt that pop up. You're going to have things that trigger you, but it's about how fast you get yourself back in alignment. It's about how fast do you catch yourself when you're thinking about failure? <gasps> it's not working. Like literally, this is how I teach my clients. The moment that like you catch yourself thinking failure, it's not working or you're beating yourself up. It's like literally right way, interrupt your thoughts and tap into like gratitude or go distract yourself with something else. The moment you catch yourself almost going to your partner, oh babe, it's not work. Stop, stop. Cause now you're speaking about it and now you're making it even more out there and you're creating it. Stop yourself, like interrupt it mid sentence. People always ask me, Alina, how do I stop thinking about failing? Stop saying it, stop thinking it. Go think about something else. Go be grateful, go hug your dog, go for a walk, go do something else. Your thoughts create everything. It's not easy to override decades of programming and coding, but I believe that the more like you use your conscious mind and the more that you're in conversations like this, if you're in my energy, I will remind you all the time. I will activate you all the time. You being more aware of your thought patterns is going to serve you. The more awareness that you have, oh shit, I'm not thinking something in alignment, the more you have the conscious choice to think about something else or do something else or go feel about something else, like gratitude. So easy, but people don't do it. In the manifestation program, I'm gonna teach you energetic mastery. I'm gonna teach you tools. Like, like it's gonna be amazing. We're gonna focus just on manifesting. I cannot wait. I have so many codes and tools. But the first thing you're going to do is you got to understand your thoughts create everything. Your thoughts create your emotions. They dictate your actions. The second you hear a thought that's not in alignment, you have to be like, interrupt it. And stop calling people. This is why my clients know when something bad's happening and like they're going through a thing, they come and riff to me because I'm like, don't you go crying to your mom and everybody because this is what people do. They're having a bad day. Something's not working. Let me go call everybody. Mom, it's not working. And you're just declaring it. Your throat trot like... You're creating more and more. You're speaking about it. You need to interrupt it mid-sentence. Mid-sentence. That's it. It's not f f like that. Like, I'm not joking. Like that. Stop it. Stop it right now. Go do something else with yourself. Focus on what you want. Think and speak about the things you want. Imagine it. Tap into gratitude for what you have. Or go take a line action. 
but you gotta stay guard of your mind, which is Jim Rohn's quote, who was Tony Robbins' mentor, who all speak about the same thing. Oprah speaks about the same thing. Your thoughts create everything. They do. This is how simple it is. Do you understand how much power you have right now to start changing your life if you just start thinking and imagining what you want and taking action towards it? And if you can't because you're having an off day, can you just be grateful for where you are because gratitude creates more? Like, that's all you have to do and you will start seeing shifts. Things will start manifesting. Do it, it does manifest on different timelines, but that's it, it will. It will happen 100%, I guarantee, I promise you. But the not working, what's wrong with me? I failed in the past, look at my family, like interrupt it, interrupt it. And tomorrow I'm gonna talk more about emotional intelligence and other things, but like right now, interrupt it, okay? Like when you start spiraling in the wrong way, catch yourself, can I tap into gratitude? Because there's always something you can tap in. Even if circumstantially, like right now, your life is hard. And that's why I'm going to talk to you guys about polarity. Because it's like, well, how do I focus on the things I want and feel about the things I want when literally my life is falling apart? So I got you for tomorrow. But for now, if something's happening, just like, can you tap into at least gratitude? Because any failing, not working, what's wrong with me, this is shit, la, 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 that is what you're going to start creating. We don't want that. Stay guard of your mind interrupt yourself when you you think about failure or you're beating yourself up share thank you Theodore. i love you i'm so i definitely needed to hear this today i'm so happy and you might want to go back look it's one 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 be brave be brave you got this go build it okay focus on what you want if you can't think about gratitude for where you are and then when you you're feeling good go build it go figure it out i don't know how go find out hire someone or go make a bunch of mistakes. But think, sitting there, how, 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 is just you sitting there thinking about how, and creating nothing. You go first, you go first, and then the universe conspires with you. It's so simple. What do you want? Start focusing on that, imagine it, feel into it, be grateful for where you are, have more conversations about this topic, stay in the zone, stay conscious, okay? And sometimes, I swear to God, you ask for something and it shows up the next day because you're just an energetic match for it. It's a miracle. Miracles happen all the time, okay? So you either focus on it, imagining it, being grateful, or you get an intuitive idea, go take your next step. The universe will always respond. Do you know how I see what we're doing with manifesting and in the world? We're always co-creating, right? The reason on the graphic there's like the little checkerboard on the left-hand side is because I want you to remember that you're always playing chess with the universe. You have to pick what you want. You put it out there. Then you have an idea, right? Because there's always a, next, a move. Like you ask for something, then you take your first move. You're playing chess with the universe and then the universe responds. And then you will go. And then the universe responds. And you're playing chess back and forth with the universe, co-creating. You go first. Take the action and then the universe will respond. Sharing. Thank you, Victoria. Like, I'll give you an example. Let's say you want to manifest your dream partner, okay? So, what's the next step about manifesting a dream partner? Probably going to sign up for Goddess Code with Alina to heal all my stuff, fix my relationship, understand men. Great move, okay? So, let's say I want a dream partner. Either you're going to jump into Goddess Code with me would be your next step, or you get a nudge. Huh, I should sign up for this dating site that just popped up on my phone because my phone listens to me and it's always showing me things in my algorithm. So I'm going to do that. Or all of a sudden your friend's like, hey, I have this concert ticket. Come with me. That's, that's like a sign. Go. And then the universe is going to respond. But you go first and the universe conspires with you. You got to make a move first. You're playing chess with the universe. It's a co-creation. Back and forth, back and forth. You go first, universe conspires, go forth, back and forth, back and forth. We're always co-creating. Sometimes, I swear to God, you will ask for something, boom, miracle. You're like, whoa, it's because you're an energetic match for it. But sometimes you gotta go prove it. So here's the thing with manifesting. Most of the time when we're manifesting something, we want something that we've never had. We want something great. And I know if you're in my world, you're like one of those people who just wants everything and you want big things, you have big dreams, okay? So if you have big dreams, big things, come with big responsibilities and big emotions. So if your dreams are really big, you have to take a few steps because you've gotta be shaped into the person that can hold that thing. 
You've got to become the energetic match to hold this big dream. So let's say you decided, I want to be my own boss. I want to work from home. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to make six figures, seven figures a year doing what I love. You, you, that's your dream with big impact, huge seven, eight figure brand with huge impact universe. That's my dream. That's my desire. Okay. So I, I actually just want you to think about that. Do you really think that you're going to wake up in the morning and you're going to have a seven figure brand pop onto your lap? Do you think that's just going to happen? All these clients? No, because think about this. Do you have the emotional capacity to hold lots of clients, a team, employees, the impact, the people talking on your stuff? Like probably not yet, but you have the, you have the capabilities. Otherwise you wouldn't dream of an eight figure business, seven figure business, but there are steps. There are things you have to become. There are things you need to be shaped into because the universe is not going to give you a huge seven figure brand. And then you, it squashes you because you don't know how to hold the team clients, people wanting things from you. We have to grow our energetic capacity. So there are some steps. There's going to be some chess. You're going to be playing with the universe for a little while. Okay. You're going to play a little chess. Sometimes it's like here, but sometimes you got to go build it. You got to manifest the buyers. So you declare it universe. I desire a seven figure brand. The universe is my wishes, your command. Okay. And then you have an idea for something. So you launch a product, a service, you become a coach. You got to go take the first step. You go first, you start the business, you build it. And then the universe will respond with giving you opportunities, with giving you clients, with giving you podcast interviews. You don't have to go get those things, but you got to take the step and building it. You know, like in field of dreams, build it and they will come. That's, that's you. You, you got to build it and then they will come, but you got to go first. Okay. Because you just don't get a big business with a lot of responsibility. You got to prove some things you got to build. That's why I always tell that story to you guys about like JK Rowling being like rejected 13 times, you know, and she kept going. She built her energetic capacity because she's a billionaire. Do you know how much responsibility comes with a billionaire? A lot, lots of people, people who don't agree with you, people that want to say things with you. Same with Walt Disney. It took him 33 no's and he kept going, but he was shaped into Walt Disney, the man who could hold the things that would come with holding a huge brand like Disney. If he just got a yes, anything would have happened and he would have just been like, screw this is really hard but you become shaped into the person that's an energetic match to hold the big dreams. Some things you manifest, you can manifest miracles. You can plant little energetic seeds in the universe, but there are a lot of things you got to make moves in. You got to be playing chess with the universe in the now moments. You got to be taking action. You got to be thinking about it. You got to be building it. You got to be feeling into it and then it will come like you, but you got to do some stuff. You can't just be lean back doing nothing. Okay. Like you can't just be like thinking about the business. There's also actions and you know that, right? It's the same thing. Like it's, here's the other thing too. It's not just also taking the actions, but you have to be believing that the actions you're taking are working. Okay. Because you could do all the right things and take all the right actions. But if you don't believe that it's working, it's not going to work because it's not about what you do. It's about who you're being when you're doing it. So if you go to the gym, and you work out, but then after the gym, you're like, I'm so fat. It's not working. I'm never losing weight. What if it doesn't fail? What if it doesn't work? Failure, failure, failure. That's why it's not working. You could do all the steps and it will still not work because in your mind, you don't believe. So as you build your business, your dream body, you co-create your dream relationship, you're taking actions by also being the person who believing that it's working, being in that thought process. Okay. Otherwise you're calling the universal hotline working out and saying also it's not working failure failure. What's wrong with me? Universe is like failure, failure, doubt, not working. Your wish is my command. No universe. I want to be sexy and lean, but I don't want to be fat, fat universe is hearing that universe. I, I want to be sexy and lean, but I just don't want to be a universe. Is like I took like invalid. I don't even know you're saying sexy and you're being fat. What do you want? Invalid. Your wish is my command. Like one last time for the people in the back, the universe doesn't understand negation. 
It just hears the thing you're thinking about. It feels the thing you're thinking about. It's the same thing with people trying to manifest money. Hello, universe, I don't want debt. Universe is like, debt, your wish is my command. No, I don't want debt. Debt, your wish is my command. No, I want to be limitless and rich, but I don't want to have debt. I want to pay off my debt. Your wish is my command. Debt, 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 debt. Like, how do I stop? Stop talking about it. Stop speaking about it. Stop thinking about it. Only think about the things you want. Only feel about the things you want. Or be here now in gratitude. That's it. That's your only option. Or be building it with taking action. That's it. That's all you can do in the now. That's the only way you build your dream life. You're either grateful for where you are, being in your life, you're thinking about what you want, or you're taking action and building it. That's it. But thinking about the things that are not working and failing, that's what you're creating. Like, I don't want debt. Debt, 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 debt. Stop speaking about it. Stop worrying about it. Stop doubting it. This most, I'm going to keep saying this. The most successful, rich, wealthy people, the people you admire, your thoughts create everything. What are you focusing on? There is only now, like right now, right here's all the power. Everything is happening now. Your manifesting powers are in the now. And it's only our resistance that we waste the now, the time, with the doubt, with the overthinking, with the how, with the why. Why isn't it working? Why did this bad thing happen? We waste time. We waste the now where all the power is to create the things that we actually want. And we waste it. We're wasting now where all the power is also waiting for circumstances outside of us to change before we change. That's, that's not how you go first. Okay. You got to change your inner game before the outside changes. If you want to be the person that's going to, I'm going to wait till everything's perfect. The circumstances are perfect. You're going to be waiting for a really long time. You go first and the universe conspires with you. You first, you got to change the inner stuff then take action and then everything on the outside will start changing. How do you tell your kids we can't buy something because we have to watch our spending or don't have money without being negative? Uh -huh. So such a good question. I talk a lot about this too, Jen. So obviously like I grew up as a gender, uh, an immigrant. So I, you know, when you're a little kid, we do manifest through our parents, the things that we receive, we manifest through our parents. So if you grew up hearing a lot of, we can't have this, we can't afford this, things are limited you as an adult will have this mindset. This, this will be looping on your autopilot, right? So something I tell my kids because I can give them anything now, but I want them to be grateful, right? So I will always say like, sometimes we're going in the stores now and I'm like, today we are just buying groceries. We're not getting chocolate eggs or TY little stuffies because my kids are like, want everything, right? So I have like this conversation. I never say to my kids, we can't have it. You can't have it. We don't have money. We j I just say right now, you guys have so many toys. Just wait till you're surprised. Or like before we go into stores, I say, hey, today I'm just buying this. Okay. We are not buying anything else. You know, surprises will come later. You guys are full like of plastic. Cause like, honestly, there's so many toys, right? Like I just have like a real conversation, but I don't bring up any, like you can't, we don't have it. Like nothing, nothing negative that I want to plant in my kids seeds in my kids head. Right. So it's all about like right now we're going to the store and this is all I'm going to get or I have conversations with them right now. Like right now, like you guys have so many toys right now. Why don't you guys play with that? And then maybe you'll get a surprise later, you know, just like the most intuitive thing. Just don't say anything about limiting them because we, as little kids, we do manifest through our parents. This is why a lot of you, if you weren't given the things that you wanted and you heard a lot of, no, you're greedy. We don't have money for that. Money is like limited. That's the stuff that makes us think that we have no power later on. Right? So just take all that negative out and just say today, we're just shopping for food today. We're just shopping for clothes. Okay. You guys have so many toys right now. I want to see you guys play with it before I decide to buy you something else. And just having those kind of things, those kind of conversations. Um, okay. So coming back, you don't need anything outside of you to change. You don't need outside circumstance change. You just need to grow. You don't need to change. You need to be braver. You don't need to change. You need to just unleash yourself to believe that there are so many possibilities for you. You don't need to change anything, but you just need to focus on what am I creating in the now right now? You got to let yourself touch things you never touched. You got to put 
miracles out there in the universe. You got to let yourself dream beyond your limitations, beyond what's possible for your parents, because you are designed for more. It is our goal to create more than our parents did. That's the whole thing. We're here to evolve. You got to let yourself touch that stuff. You can jump so high. You can pull that stake out, but you got to have massive courage. You got to be willing to be uncomfortable and you got to stop avoiding pain because pain is inevitable. Pain is going to happen. You are going to make mistakes. But how will you ever know that you're strong if you never lift your foot? I promise you you're more stronger than you ever thought. But Alina, what if it doesn't work? What if it hurts? But what if it doesn't work? If something bad happens, sit with it. You're going to realize you're going to be okay. I really don't believe that the universe, God, source, sends you something that you can't handle. It always sends us only the things that we can emotionally handle. So just sit with it. Yeah, it hurts. I launched this thing. It didn't happen. It hurts. Work on your emotions. Go again. Sit with the discomfort, the pain. Because honestly, that's where you find your personal power. You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Because I hope that you're the type of person that at least you go out and try and make mistakes than the alternative where you get to the end of your life and you're always wondering, what if I just went for it? What could have my life become if I just went for it? The number one regret of the dying is I wish I went for it. I wish I lived more. I wish I started the business. I wish I hired the coach. I wish I healed my problem. I wish I did this. I wish I did that. I wish I told them I love them. I wish I forgave sooner. I wish I lifted my foot and became free. 99% of the dying always say they regret the things that they didn't go for. That next level move that you want to make, that's the thing you got to go for. That problem that's in your way right now, move it. Move the problem. Why are you wasting your life being the same person, staying in the same problem, staying comfortable? And you don't need to change anything in your circumstances. You just need to be braver than you've ever been. And if you're really scared to, to fail, well then sit there with the, with the thoughts of failing and realize I'm actually okay. And it actually makes me stronger for me to sit with this. It is scary to jump into things that are unknown. It's scary to take risks, taking leaps of faith, doing something you've never done, but oh my God, it's so liberating. It's so liberating. I wish I did the stuff I'm doing now sooner, but I was so scared. If you want more in your life, you want more aliveness, you want more love, more romance, more meaning, go do something you've never have. Go do the thing that you're scared to do that you know is your next level move. Start the business, go live, hire the coach, join the program, have that hard conversation, put those boundaries, say no to that person. Be willing to look at the things you need to look at to heal them. Forgive, say yes, say no, be brave. Manifestation, it's, it's not just about the money and status, guys. It's about the feeling of being so alive in your life. It's about finding out what am I actually, what's my actual potential in this lifetime? It's about, I don't want to get to the end of my life and wish I went for it. When we look back on our life, we want to remember we freaking lived and our life mattered. We want nights that we'll never forget. We want kisses and mind-blowing romance. We want to feel our heart pound. We want to have massive celebrations. We want deep meaning in our life. We want a life that takes our breath away. We all want that, all of us. That's what we want. But we can't have that when we play small, when we're scared of pain, and we constantly live a life of comfort. Comfort and playing small is not an energetic match for more, for quantum leaps, for mind-blowing magic and miracles. You can't just be dipping your toe in, dipping your toe in, dip you got to just jump in the pool and go all the way in. If you want to be matched for huge things, you got to make big moves. And you don't always have to make big moves. We're going to talk about collapsing time and taking smaller moves, but you got to be moving in the direction of where you're going, or otherwise you just get stuck here. Stop dipping your toe in, because that's the other thing. We, we're not where we want 
at the rate that we want to go because we just dip our toes in things. Oh, I'm going to try this a little bit. I'm just going to go to this master class, but never like invest in myself. I'm going to just like look at branding for something, but never actually start the business. Stop dipping your toe in and go for it. Go for it because I promise you, you're going to have me in your ear when you're a little old lady or little man. You're going to be like, God damn it. I wish I listened to that crazy lady yelling at me because I feel like I'm yelling. <laughs> we, you want your life to matter. You want deep meaning. Go do things that you've never done. Get out of your comfort zone. That's where everything feels so liberating and exciting outside of your comfort zone. There's so much of you that's untapped. I can't believe how much I've discovered, how much potential I have in just the last short three years or almost four years. I can't even imagine where I'm going to be 10 years from now because I'm never going to quit this. I'm going to keep going and keep focusing so I can keep proving to you that what I'm talking about is real. If you just focus on what you want, feel into it, be in gratitude and or be taking action, you will get there and you will be messaging me and be like, I'm so happy. I listened to that live. I'm so happy I went for it. I was scared, but I did it and I felt alive and my life mattered and I, and I lived for the life. Oh, like that's what I want for you. You are not your genes. You're not your family. You are limitless. You're not your circumstances. You're there's so much more to you. There's so much more that you can be in this lifetime. I don't know where I'd be in you in my life from the heart and angel from heaven. Oh, I love you. You're so sweet. I love you guys. I have so much more. Oh, I can't believe it's almost an hour and a half. I could just blah, 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 keep talking. I have a little bit more. Then we're going to wrap it up. Okay. Go find your courage. Go find your strength. Go be willing to go first. Okay. Stretch your mind. Stretch your heart. Stretch your power. Go be bold. Go be brave. Go do it. Go all in with your whole heart so that you never have a regret. And if it doesn't work the first time, you go again and you go again and you go again. The universe, this is one of my favorite quotes, the universe is saying to you, show me your new vibration and I will show you miracles. If you want more, you want to manifest your dreams, then dream it, feel it, and then claim it by taking action. You got to be vibrating at another level. You got to be doing things you've never done. I can't wait to tell you what I'm doing right now. So idly out of my comfort zone. Happy 420. It's my mom's birthday today too. Happy birthday, mom. I love you. You're the best. <laughs> Excited. Thank you. I'm so happy. And you're going to want to re-listen to this. Trust me. Okay. All right. But stay also in these kinds of conversation. Cause like I said, the autopilot strong, you have decades of programming, decades of thinking about failure in your past stuff and the things that your parents said. So this is why I'm such a believer. The more you can bring consciousness in your life, like having conversations like this, being in my world like if i activate you do you feel something right now you're conscious and the more conscious you are the more that you know that right now in your you're in your power to be creating and thinking about the things you want to create in a different timeline it's when you're in your rituals and you're on autopilot that you're looping things from the past we want to be more conscious stay in conversations like this Go do things, walk a different path today, take a different drive today, do things different, get more conscious in your life. But I promise you, like all of us want more and it's not about the money and the status. It's just, I want more freedom. I want more love. I want more passion. I want more celebration. I want more pleasure. I want more nights that take my breath away. Romance, love, impact. Like I want you to have it all, but you got to realize that like, it's just the illusion keeping you stuck and untapped. That's it. You're not your parents. You're not your genes. You're not the flea in the jar. You're not that same version of you when you were little and things messed up. Even if it was like two years ago, you started a business and it didn't work. Go again. Your failures teach you so much lessons and they make you so strong. But what if Alina, I launched my idea and no one buys it. It will be so embarrassing. Yes, it will. It's okay. Go again. You're going to be okay. Sit with it. I failed. Oh shit. All right. Well, at least I learned not to do it this way. Let me go again. What if I do my live Alina and no one likes it? I'm going to be so embarrassed. It's going to hurt. Sit with it. And you're going to notice. Yeah, it sucks, but I'm fine. Go again. That's not a reason not to go again because it hurts. You're going to try for things and they're not going to work the first time, the second time, the third time, but that's not a reason to stop trying. 
There are times you're going to ask for things and then get them. And then sometimes you're going to ask for things and it's going to take a while and you're going to get a whole bunch of prove it's and you're going to get a whole bunch of tests. But that's not a reason to stop asking for things and stop moving in the direction that you want to go in. Go again, be brave, go again, be brave, go again, be brave. You're going to become wiser, stronger, braver, and, and then it's going to keep working and it's going to compound all that. I'm going to take questions on our, so if you want, this is what I'm going to do after this, uh, Megan. I'm going to put a, a Q&A thread, but I would love for you to hold your questions because I do have a, a there's a madness to what I do. So there's a, there's a sequence of things I want to teach and I have a feeling sometimes the things you're going to ask me are things I'm going to talk about tomorrow or on the, the third day because there's going to be a little bonus. Um, but we are going to do a draw for the tuition draw and I'm going to do a Q&A, okay? So what I will do after this is I will put a Q&A thread so you can just write your question down and then see if I talk about it tomorrow, then you can take it off. But if not, just keep your question there and we'll do a Q&A. Just because I don't want this to be so long and I feel like this content is so important that I just want it to be streamlined, okay? But I will answer questions, okay? So the thread, okay? So coming back to this. Show me your new vibration and the universe will show you miracles. Just be brave. And you gotta change your problem. Again, if you haven't watched the Prove It Masterclass, go watch that. Because you have a problem, there's a thing that you think is keeping you stuck, that you keep having, move it. If you don't change your problems, you just continue to be the same person. It's ridiculous though. It's ridiculous, how do we have the same program, like the same pro pro problem so many times, over and over again. Like, why are we afraid of changing? You're a human, we're supposed to evolve, that's what we're here for. If you're not where you are financially, in your relationships, you're still not happy, you don't like your body, you're still not free, you don't feel alive, you don't feel like your, your life matters, get out of that comfort zone. Get out of that comfort zone. Go do something you've never done. Move the problem. Move the problem. If you still have the same problem, you're always going to be the same person. Be brave. Look at it. Sit with it. It's uncomfortable. And then move it. What's the next level move that you know you need to make in your life? Go do that. If you have a hard time, and honestly, I get this. This is why people have coaches and mentors. If you have a hard time with being brave and doing it and having staying power, being really consistent with things, then your actual next step is go find someone who speaks life into you. Go get a coach, go get a mentor, go get an accountability partner. Go find someone that activates you. I don't hire coaches and mentors or learn from people unless they activate something in me. I got to feel activated because that's what brings my consciousness forward. Go find someone that speaks life into you and then go surround yourself with constant conversations like this because once you unplug this, you're going to go back into your autopilot and you're going to hang around with your family and friends who say, it's not real that you can do this and that and blah, 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 blah. And then they're going to keep solidifying it. You have to make your move and get yourself in containers like this. Even if you go on my YouTube or go on my guide section and you're going to make a declaration that you're going to watch my master classes on repeat, that is going to help you manifest because I'm going to keep reminding you and activating you of your conscious power of what you're doing in the now. But if you keep plugging and you come into this for a little bit and you activate and you don't do anything with it and you don't stay in this conversation, you just keep being the same person. We have to become more conscious. You're one of those people for me. Oh, I'm so happy. I know I'm told I'm an activator and I always like to help people channel things too. So I'm happy. If I make you feel at any moment, I'm activating you. And that's really good because we change in our emotions, not here. When you're writing things down, this is like a conceptual thing, but you're, when you start feeling things, you're changing on a cellular level. You're conscious and that's a beautiful thing. And if you wanna go into like a next level conversation for like three weeks with me where there's gonna be six or seven modules, I have a manifestation program I'm launching. There's no graphic yet. We have people signed up already, which is so amazing with just a link manifesting buyers amazing it's 777 777 777 dollars you can do a payment plan for five months once a month and i'm going to take you through deeper conversations than this everything you want to know about manifesting tools i'm going to make you think the way you've never thought before i'm going to flip everything upside down i'm going to wake you up because when you change the way you look at things the things you look at change Wayne Dyer, when I finally got that, I was like, that is so mind-blowing, right? 
It's these conversations that will shift things, but you need to be in it. That could be one of your next moves is to just be in the zone of having these conversations so you don't forget your power and what you're doing in the now. But Alina, what if I sign up for your manifestation program? If, what if it doesn't work? Enough with the goddamn failure talk, okay? Like, let's just go find out. Go find out. Just go find out. And if it hurts, sit with it and you're gonna realize you're okay. Quantum leaps happen when you're an energetic match to them. So go do things you've never done. I'm so glad I caught you live because you've helped me. Oh, I'm so happy, Megan. I'm so happy and I have so much more for you guys. Stop dipping your toe in. You know what your next level move is. You know. And I have small offers, I have big offers. And sometimes, honestly, if you're just like, I'm not ready for that, stay in my free stuff. Just stay in these conversations. Stay conscious. Stay conscious. The more you're conscious, the more you're going to really know what the heck you're thinking about. Stop dipping your toe in, though, and just jump. There is more for you. You are only seeing what's possible for you right now, and it's the tip of the iceberg, and it's illusion. There's so much more. Go for it. When you go for it, it's your lucky day. Make the move. Quantum leaps are available to you, and they make no sense. And you can't be, and they can't be calculated, but it's all about you just decided and you went for it. You don't need to know how it's going to happen. You just need to trust that the nudge, the intuition, you go for it and it will happen. You don't even need to understand the quantum field. I don't think anybody's really going to understand the quantum field. This is why logic people have a hard time. Like we can already know that when we look at atoms with our intention, atoms change. Like we'd have some science about the quantum field, but ultimately, I don't know if we're there yet to really understand it, but what matters is what the successful rich and what I'm saying to you is your thoughts create everything and everything is created in the now because everything's happening right now. What are you thinking? What are you feeling into? And if you can't tap into a dream and you're not feeling good and you're spiraling, tap into gratitude. This is why you hear all the successful people always say, gratitude, gratitude. Get into a gratitude rampage and then go take aligned action when you feel good and get excited and you think about the things you want, but stop thinking about the things you do not want and wondering why you're manifesting them. Wow, this is what's happening to me right now. Ugh. So this is day one. We talked about the illusions, okay? So the first illusion is like every lucky person you see, you're jealous. It's a sign that you're meant for more. If you're activated in this conversation, you are already meant for it. You're, you're an energetic match for everything you want. The only way you don't believe in it yet is because you're the flea in the jar you haven't seen anybody do it around you yet. So you got to tell the universe, universe, I desire expanders. Put the people on my path that show me what's possible. My dreams are possible. Put them on my path so I see it. They will expand you. Okay. And then the other thing that might be holding you back is you failed before. There was pain in the past. There was hurt in the past. And now you're scared to try again. You're not the same person. Even if it was a year ago that you did something and you failed, you're not the same person. Go again, go again, go again, because I promise you when you're a little old lady at the end of your life, all you're going to think about is the shit that you wish you did, the stuff that you went for. Move your problem, okay? And the other thing is like we're going to deepen other things tomorrow. But other thing you can think about today, how do I make myself more conscious? Start doing inventory of your thoughts. What am I thinking about? And you know how you get conscious? Again, instead of being in your rituals, I know people love routines, but routines put you in autopilot. So get yourself out of those routines and start doing things differently. If you brush your teeth with your right hand, brush them with your left hand today. Yeah, because it's going to make you think, oh, this is a little harder. Conscious, I'm conscious. If you go down a bike path that you usually do, go a different way. If you usually go right, go left today. Go get a different conversation. Go get into conversations that make you feel here because you're, you're activated, but do inventory of your thoughts. How much are you thinking about failing? It's not working. What's wrong with me? And then tomorrow we're going to talk about a, a lot of things, like a lot of amazing things. And you're going to really understand that also manifestation is a sensory experience. And I'm going to teach you a next level strategy. I'm going to teach you two strategies tomorrow. Okay. How to really get your energy and your feelings aligned. Oh, thank you, Jacqueline, for tagging. You guys are amazing. Okay? So, if you want to be in a draw where you automatically get a free uh, 
program credit, I guess, into uh, Money Codes, which is our lifetime access program that I'm doing all about manifesting money, creating money, investing money. We have five modules. You'll get a free, um, you'll just get that program for free, and then you will get 50% off to use towards any programs or bundles. And I know everybody who shared before, you're going to have a special draw that I'll do for you guys for the 333 and the Money Codes. Um, so all you have to do is share this video. Um, take a snapshot of it or uh, the graphic and just tag me and so what we're gonna do is Probably on Monday. I will let you guys know ahead of time. We'll do the draw. We'll do Q&A um, But tomorrow is day two We're gonna have a next level conversation. I'm really excited. I love this stuff I love you and if you feel like someone could really use to hear this Share it with them. I'm really that's why I love doing the day one on my personal page because I want more people to hear these conversations there are people at the top that don't want people to know how much personal power we have. That's why I said the whole 24-7 and the other little things, it, they, they created that to create reasonable doubt so that you didn't believe that it was possible. But everything you can imagine is possible. You just got to keep focusing on it. You got to keep feeling about it. And when you're having a bad day, you got to just be here in your gratitude because there's always something you'd be grateful for. And when you're feeling good again, Take action, go build it, they will come. You go first and the universe will conspire with you. There is no other reason you have the desires and the dreams that you have if you were not a match for it. You are absolutely a match for it, okay? I, spun, I stumbled upon this today and I realized I was deaf meant to be here. Wow, thank you, I know, I know. If you stumbled upon this and you don't even know who I am, there's a reason. I, I believe that with my whole heart. The people that are placed on our path they're there for a reason. Even the ones that trigger you <laughs> or make you jealous. Okay? They're here for you to heal. They're here to show you that you're meant for more. So glad I caught the email. Me too. Me too. Mm. I get some water. Okay. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you everybody who shared. I'm so excited for tomorrow's call. And it will be in the high performance coaching community. Okay? But all of these will be also uploaded onto my YouTube channel. So if you don't want to listen on live, um, we're going to email the replays for you guys too. And you guys will have a YouTube link so you can listen on the car, go back and re-listen. Okay. Thank you. Amazing class. Thank you. I'm taking my mom. Yeah. Take the mamas. Take the mamas. Okay. I'm off. I love you so much. And I'm also going to put that Q&A thread as well. Okay. Thank you, Megan, for bringing that up.